Alright, we're up. Hello. People who are not on the stream yet, probably YouTube people. In the chat, and we will begin. Geometry. Period. One, four, two. Yeah, I like that. Should be fun. All right. And hopefully, people start trickling in, and we will get started. <coughs> Geometry is half as good, which seems to be normal. So, okay. Hello. Oh, and I needed to. Change the latency on all of these. I don't know where that settings. Hmm. Huh. Don't know how to lower my latency. Some chat is faster. But hello. Um, hope you're having a good Thursday. It's like one o'clock. This one. Um, and. You're going to start by doing some review. So if you guys have the review problems that we did, so page, I think I sent the wrong pages. I think it should have been 606, not 605. 606, 5 to 8, 15 through 18, and then um, 607, 23 to 20. And we're going to do some of those just to go over them to review. And then we will... Um, Continue the chapter, start some new stuff. I think that's going to kind of be our, our rhythm. Of course, practice problems from the previous lesson and then start the new one. Uh, hope your Thursday is going well. And hope you're staying home, not too bored, playing games or something. Um, yeah, so here are. Problems. Let's go look at those. Uh, and we have find some areas. Excuse pi of square We're not going to do those ones. We're going to do the ones on the, that are on the next page. These ones. Also 23 or 29. Okay. So these ones here. The circles. Yeah. So start with 23. Remember, if you have any questions, uh, you can go ahead and ask them in the chat. I'm going to do 23 first. 23 was, 23 was find the area of the shaded region. So we want the, that donut. Circle, and then another circle. And this one has a radius of six meters, and this one has a radius of four. Make sure you're okay. Hope he's lying. Uh, so we're gonna find both areas, and then we're gonna subtract the small one from the larger one, right? So our area formula for a circle is pi r squared. We just take the radius and we substitute in for we substitute in for the radius, and then we'll find the area and we can subtract. So area one, we'll do the big area first. I times twenty-four squared. Is she okay, babe? 
Right. And then we put that in our calculator. Uh, 24 squared on my calculator. I think. I have 76, so this would be area 1 is going to be 576 pi meters squared. And I'm not going to. Um, well, that is not in focus. Oh, it sounds like. Uh, I'm going to leave this with pi here. I'm not going to fix that yet, or multiply, because our other area, our area 2, is also going to be in meters squared. Okay, so then we would square that, so we get 36 pi. Right, and then we would subtract. So our area of our donut that we're trying to find is this one. Our area is going to be 576 pi minus 36 pi. We can do this in our head. The 6 will cancel. The 7 will change the force. So this is 540 pi. And then we'll use a calculator. All right, so we're subtracting to remove to take out that donut hole and to solve it. That much better. Much better. Okay. So 540 pi, you can put in a calculator. But we're basically taking the big piece, we're subtracting the small piece out of it, and that gives us a portion of a donut. Okay. Uh, and then this. Um, what should we do? Uh, 25 is kind of annoying. All right. Ooh, 27. These are kind of tough. Yeah, we'll do them now. Uh, so, let's do this 24, you just find the area of the rectangle, and then, um, let's talk about 24. So we have, oops, 24 has a rectangle with these four circles that are all touching. And so the sides here are 20, which means this plus this plus this plus this is 20, and there are four of them, so they're each 10. So using that, you can find the areas of the circles, and then you would subtract from the total area of the square, and that would give you the piece of something here. Okay, okay. So I'm not going to solve that one because that one's not too hard. There's just four circles that you guys subtract from the total. 25, though, we have um, one inch pieces or one foot pieces and there's a bunch of them. So uh circle one two three four and five I think and then all of these lengths are the same one two three four five That's one two three four five and they're all congruent and they're all one. So what we need to do is we're going to find the area of the big circle, and then we got to do a bunch of subtractions to find the, the pieces here. So there's five. This total is five feet. So pi five squared is twenty-five pi, and we're going to leave everything in pi to the subtract very end. Okay, so twenty-five pi is the big, the biggest circle without all the pieces taken away, and then we're going to subtract from that. These inside pieces. So this tiniest one is going to be. Now we don't need to do the tiniest one because we can just include that. So this is going to be one two squared times pi. So minus a four pi is this one. So it's four pi. Okay. 
And then we don't want to subtract this piece. Uh, this this piece because it's shaded, and then this piece is shaded. So we just need to subtract this now. So this one's going to be one, two, three, four. So we're going to do minus sixteen pi because it's four squared, and then we will. Um, add in, we need to add in the inside back, because we don't want to subtract the total circle, we just want to subtract that ring. So we need to add back in this 9 pi, that's 3 squared, it's pi, 3 squared pi, right? So then we would simplify this subtraction and addition, uh, and we're going to add 20, we're going to subtract 20 and add 9, so it's going to be 5 plus 9, so this is 14 pi. Okay, so we're just adding and subtracting the pieces till we have the right shadings left. Okay, and then 26 is the same. It's going to be half of a circle. We subtracted the middle out, and then we divide by 2. So I'm not going to do 26. 27, no. Ooh, and 28 is also. Hmm. Ah, uh, we'll do 27. So 27 here. Hmm, we have a right angle, and those are all the same. So that's a right triangle. Isosceles right triangle. This is 180 here. This line. This is a right angle. We have this. These are both five. They're the same. And then we have the radiuses, which we don't know, but we can calculate because it's a sausage triangle. Right? Yeah, so it's 45, 45, 90. There's a couple ways to do this. I'm going to use one of our trig functions. Uh, we would use sine. Sine 45 is equal to opposite over the hypotenuse, or over 5. So 5 sine 45 equals the opposite side, which is the radius. And plug that into a calculator. So, and then this is going to be not a pretty number, about 3.53, and then that's the radius. So this is 3.53. And so the area of the circle, we want to find this area. The area of that circle is going to be 3.53 squared times pi. And then we need to subtract this little, the area of this triangle. And the way we do that, there's a couple ways, but um, one half base times height, right? So it's a, it's a right triangle here. So we can do 5 times 5. Half of 5 times 5. So this is going to be 3.53 going on squared pi minus 25. And so our area is 2.53 squared pi minus 25. So the total area. <clears throat> no, not 25. I'm sorry, you have to divide this by 2. Like that one doesn't make sense. 26. 26 points. Approximately. We rounded some things. Okay? And then. Hmm. 
The last one has a kite in it. Do I want to figure this out? Ugh. Not sure I want to spend the time to figure this out. I might just move on. Oh, they're just I saw six trying to see. That's annoying. So 28 is isosceles triangle. There, I saw you make isosceles triangles. Probably should not assign that one. We would have figured that in class. Uh, I'll draw a picture to show you what the isosceles triangles are, because you have to add those in, and then you got to find some areas and subtract. And that's so. This here's our circle for 28. This line, here's our radius, these are all R, and then I'm just going to draw the one height, or the one half. This is a four, and this is three. If you draw this line, add that in, you have another radius. And so you have this isosceles triangle with the two radiuses and the three, and then you have this isosceles triangle with the two radiuses and the four. And you can find them. Find them. All right. Uh, and so the total thing would look like this, where this is also three, and this is four, and this is the radius. And then you can find the area of the triangle based on just that. Because there's only going to be one circle with it. can be a three or four like that. So they have to be, the radiuses have to be the same. Uh, okay, so to do this, the um, area oh. this area, the height here, different height here. So you would do area. Use oh, no. no, no. no, no. no, no. I'm not gonna do this problem. Not worried about it. Things are gonna harder. I mean, it seems harder than I want. I think I wanted to do 29. 29. You just find the. You gotta solve for x because uh, you have some boxes that are the same. The key is to notice that. Um, we have this box, this curve, and this rectangle. These are all the same length because they are squares, and then this is the same length. So this equation here, 3x minus 2, is the same as 2x plus 1. And if you guys have any questions, you should ask them in the chat. So we get x equals 3. Track 2x from both sides at 2 to both sides of your x is 3. And then we plug that in and we could find the areas. Right? We can find this length. This is going to be 9 minus 2, so 7. This is also going to be 7. And then this long length here is going to be uh, 15. So you would get 49. 15 times 7. Is 105, and then this is going to be pi 7 squared divided by 4 because it's a quarter of a circle, and you would add all those together, and that gives you a quarter. Okay, that's a bit of review. Skip 28 because it was annoying. To find a radius, and it's not necessarily as fun.
Um, so here's what we're going to do. Alrighty, uh, this is our chapter summary. Last week, or on Tuesday, sorry, not last week, on Tuesday we talked about finding the areas of uh, more complicated figures using sector area and uh, areas of circles, and then we we're subtracting and adding was kind of the main goal there. Today, we want to use. I'm on the I am not on the right screen. Why did that not switch? There we go. All right. So we had done area of a sector. We had a formula for that. We had arc length. We had a formula for that. We'll get to volumes here. Um, it'll work with our other volumes. We talked about area of a circle, which is important. And today, we are going to do area of kite and um, area of regular polygons. Mostly we're just worried about can we find the area of a more complex shape. So not circular, but usually made up of triangles or squares. So that's our goal is to find these areas. We've got a couple of formulas for both of those. And here's the chapter in the textbook. So if you have your textbook, you would go to page 609. Okay, just start. We're not going to start. Actually, we're not going to do page 609. You go to page 610. Uh, and we're going to find areas of rhombuses and kites. Okay, so we're going to start with those. Basically, the way to think about this is you can find the area using the, the diagonals. There's more complex ways. You find the area of all four of those triangles. Uh, let's, uh, oops. This triangle here, this triangle, this triangle, and this triangle, and you add them together or multiply by two because really it's uh, the same on both sides. So that's what they're expressing here is that you can talk about these triangles with this base, distance two, and the height is half of distance A. It doesn't matter if it's a rhombus or a cut, you can move that line around. Okay, so if you know the, uh, the distances there, and we have lots of ways to calculate those, um, you can find those. And you would go back to... Okay. So, we're just going to use the formula. The formula is in the student journal pages. So if you... Download the student journal from Dropbox. It's on this page. It looks like this. That provided. Uh, here's our formula. Half of uh, D1 divided by 2, D2. So area is half of distance 1 times distance 2. I think I just said divided by 4. It's okay. Resolutions. Another thing to figure out. Um, so that would look like this. Okay. And the reasoning is there's a couple of reasons. Uh, but when we take our height. I learned about kites when we were doing quadrilaterals. I can take this triangle and I can move it up here, and I can take this triangle and I can move it up here, and all of a sudden this turns into this rectangle. Well, actually, sorry, I drew that backwards. Now we have a rectangle where this is distance two, say, two here. And then this little piece is half of the height up here, half of distance one. 
Okay, so that's where that formula comes from. That's another way to think about it. Is we've turned our kite into a rectangle and we have a formula for that rectangle that's simplified. So what we're going to do is we're going to do some problems. Um, using that one right here, these are student journal pages. We're going to work through these examples. Or I'm not going to do the examples because the examples are in the book. Uh, we're going to do these in the math proficiencies. So here's the formula. On that page, we have d1 times d2, and they're telling us the area, number one there, the, find the area when the diagonal is 4 and 5. So it would be 1 half times 4 times 5. And yes, it's just plugging stuff in and multiplication. So we do 4 times half is 2, 2 times 5 is 10 square feet. In feet and square. All right. And then number two, we use the same formula. The area is going to be one half. Oh, um, there you go. Sorry. Switch it. One half of maybe twelve. And 12 divided by 2 is 6, so we get 6 times 9. 6 times 9 is 8. Nope, inches squared, sorry. Inches. Okay. So really, we're calculating the size of a rectangle. We're turning that cut into a rectangle and so on. And if, I have, if you have any questions or I'm going too fast, you should ask them in the chat. Now, we have a couple of things we want to do with regular polygons, and so we needed to find it. Uh, if you print it out or are using your student journal, whoops, that button, that button. Um, oh, that's confusing. At button. Okay, so here we just talked about in the student journal, we just talked about the formula for the area of the kite. Now we're going to talk about the area of a regular polygon, and we need to define some things. So there's the perimeter here, which we'll find a side, which is labeled here, and the apophthalm, which is a new word. Okay. So if you go back up to the beginning of the student journal, there's all this vocab. Okay. So the center of a regular polygon is the the, very, the, the middle, right? It's the point all the, the radiuses connect to. The radiuses are the distances to the, the vertices here. So this is a... I think you're mixing that up. Let's double check. This is right here. Um, yeah, the radius is the vertice, so p to n vertice, p to q is the apophthalm, the distance to the side, so it makes a right angle with the side, and it's a distance to the side, so that's what the apophthalm is, so we could add that in to this if you want. And then the central angle here, the central angle is the, um, the angle from the radius to the radius. Right there. So you just divide 360 by however many sides there are. And so to find those pieces, when we have our thing, we we'll find some angle measures, we would find uh, BFA or AFB by dividing 360 by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, which is what they did right here. And they got 72. Okay, and then we have an isosceles triangle, so that would make this 36 and that 36. Oh, no, I'm sorry. This would be 36 here, and then the 54 is when we subtract. So this is 54. 
And those angles might be useful because we may need to do, um, right? We may need to use sine, cosine, and tangent to find these sides. I'm just freezing through it. It's a lot of reference. Not technology. Okay. So here's how we would find the area. The area is half of the length of the apothem times the perimeter. And that probably seems really weird. But the reason it's that is because what we're doing is we're finding a triangle and then we're multiplying it by however many triangles there are. We're going to find the area of the triangle, one half a times s. We're going to rearrange this formula so it makes more sense. One half of a, which is the height of this right triangle, or the height of this isosceles triangle, times s, which is the number of, or the length of the side, and then times n, which is the number of sides. So we find how big is this triangle, and then multiply that by however many triangles there are. One, two, three, four, five, six. Area of triangle times six is how we find out. Okay? So let's do this example to kind of talk through how to find the radius using the apothem, that distance, and the side, and our formula. So I'm going to go to this. Not me, not my face. Oh, that's great. Okay, and so A here is going to be half of A times the total perimeter. So you could do it that way. It's a bit more complicated. Or the area is half of the apothem times one of the sides. This is area of an isosceles triangle in the polygon. Remember, regular polygons all have the same size angles and same size size. And then we would multiply that times the number of triangles. And that will give us the total area. Okay? They're basically using P because they're adding all the side lengths together instead of just multiplying by the number of triangles. Okay, so our example in the textbook is we have how many sides this thing have? One, two, three, four, five. Looks like nine sides. And I am on page 612, if you're following along. I got lost. So there's, it's nine sides. Nine sides, nine triangles. And I'm just going to draw the triangle that they have in the picture instead of drawing a whole nine sided shape because that's going to be. There's the apothem, which makes right angle. And this is four. Now, this is not a lot of information, but this radius is going to tell us what is the lower case? What is the lower case? Sorry. This is the apothem. Okay, so that A is the apothem. And it's the distance, it's this right angled side here. We have to find that distance using trig, probably. Psychosynth. Okay. So to do that, we need to figure out what's this angle. And that angle, and even this angle. And that angle is going to be 360 divided by the number of sides. So the angle here is 360 over 9, which is 40 degrees. So this then is 20 degrees. So it's half. 20. This is the hypotenuse is 4. And we want to find both the apothem, this piece of the right triangle, with the leg, and the base. So that's going to be a side. So we would use 20, and we would use 
opposite over hypotenuse, you would use cosine. So we're going to erase. Where is the formula? Okay, so we want to find A. A is going to be cosine of 20 equals adjacent over the hypotenuse, which is 4. So 4 cosine 20 is A, and that is the distance. And I'm not going to evaluate that until the very end. I'm going to leave it like that. My declaration is easy. Let's say. And then we want to find the base of the triangle. Oh, you make noises. Uh, we want to find the base of the triangle. The base is going to be the sine of that. So, sine of 20 is opposite over hypotenuse, so b over 4, 4 sine 20. And that is only half the length, right? Because that's this, this piece right here, and we want the whole thing. Really, it's going to be 8. So s from our formula is going to be 8 sine 20. Okay, and then we get, get this thing. So then we would use our formula. The area of this triangle here is going to be one half uh, a times s. So half of four cosine twenty times eight. Sine one and we would multiply that the area of that is going to be or the area of the whole thing is gonna be that nine times. So nine times this simplified we would do half of four is two, two times four. Two times eight is sixteen. Cosine twenty sine twenty. And then we would plug this into a calculator and we would get itch. And it would be did they tell us the units? No. Nope. Unit squared. There they are. Okay. So that's the area of the the area of this thing. So we have, we used this 4, we found LM, that's the apothem, that was A. And then we found KJ, that's the side length of that triangle. And then we found the area of this little pi piece and multiplied it times 9, because that's how many pieces there are, and the triangles there are in that uh, polygon. Okay, so the apothem is the distance to the side. The radius is the uh, distance to the vertice of the regular polygon. And the side length is the side of the... And this only works if it's regular, which means all those interior angles have to be the same, and all the sides have to be the same length as well. Okay? Is there a oh. uh, So we could do something like number five here on the mod monitoring progress. We're gonna do this right here. And then I'll take some questions and just practice on it like I did. Okay, so often I'm not gonna draw the whole shape because we don't need to draw the whole shape, we just need a triangle. And then we need to know how many triangles are there. Oh, sometimes to draw the whole shape, it's or to find out how many terms, it's helpful to draw the whole shape. So here's our pentagon. 
And then we have our triangles. There's the pentagon, there's triangles, and there's one, two, three, four, five. It's regular, so they should all be the same size, even though they don't look like they're the same size. This is right here. Uh, and I'm on page 613 in the textbook. Okay, so the apophthegm is going to be 6.5. So we would do we're looking for this triangle. I'm just taking out one of the triangles and redrawing it. So this is 6.5 here. And then this radius, or the hypotenuse, is 8. And then we need to find this piece. There's a couple ways. We can find the angles one way. That seems inefficient when it's a right triangle. I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so 8 squared is going to equal 6.5 squared plus x squared. This thing. We need to find that whole length. So it's going to be, my answer is going to be 2 times whatever we get for x here. And then we would subtract and take the square root. So x is going to be the square root of 8 squared minus 6.5 squared. So I'm going to get that into Google. We're really going to decimals. Okay. So we're using the Pythagorean theorem because this is a right triangle. We know the hypotenuse and one of the length, side lengths, so the other side length. And we're going to simplify this and that will give us x. So here is Desmos. We're doing the square root of 8 squared minus 6.5 squared. And to get the square root, I just typed in SQRT. Just the square root symbol. And so that gives us an x value of 4.6636. Okay. We don't really need that. We need to double that. And so if I put a 2 here in front and Devnos, we can find double. So this distance here, this side length, is going to be double, which is 9.37. Puppy woke up. Okay, so now we know the apothem. We know the side length. We know how many triangles there are in the shape. There's five. So we can find the area. Area is going to be one half base time side of the triangle. The base is 9.32. You could also use this, this triangle and find this area and then multiply it by 10 because there's 10 of those small triangles in between. But we'll just use the formula we've been using. So side length would be 9.32 going on times uh, the apothem, which is 6.5, times the number of triangles, which is Five, and so I ran out of room to write my Yeah, right? Yeah, it just turns out. And so we plug that into the calculator, and so we would get A is. Point 0.5 times 6.5 times 5. So there's five triangles times 9.327. The, the more digits we put in, the more accurate it will be. Okay. And so the area is going to be 151.01 in this unit. It doesn't tell us the units, so it's just unit squared. Okay. So basically, the goal is to find the area of one triangle, count how many triangles there are in the polygon, because they're all the same, and then multiply by that number of triangles, and that gives us the total area. So this would be our, our answer. Sometimes you're going to have to find this angle, right, or this angle. And then you use sine, cosine, and tangent to find the missing pieces. Other times, if you know two pieces, you can just... Use by Python here, by the way. Okay, so like this other problem here, 
uh, in the textbook. This number six here just gives you the side length of seven. You're gonna have to find the angle and then um, and then find the bottom of that and then find the area. Okay. So here's what I want us to do for. Um, yeah, so it will be these first two problems, and then said so 19 to 22 are kind of fine pieces. There. Yeah. And I realize this is a bit different than normal school, right? We would normally spend some days doing each of these. Um, like yesterday was Wednesday, so we would have done the Tuesday lesson, and then on Wednesday as well, and then today we would have done a lesson in the morning. Friday as well. We we'll probably need much further in the chapter for now, but that's all I got for today. So the practice is going to be 614 in the textbook. It's going to be 3 through 10 and then 19 through 22. And remember, you're only doing these if you want extra practice. Okay? Try to do next year, and then we'll get to probably eventually. Um, that's it for today. If you have any questions, you can ask them in the... This, so you can see what the practice problems are. 6, 14, 3 through 10, 19 through 22. I'll send a remind to the geometry people again. And... That's it. That's all I got for us. I am... Um, yeah so yeah basically we're just finding the areas of polygons by finding the areas of a triangle one half base on type and then we're multiplying okay uh, we'll be back on Tuesday and it'll be May soon which is kind of crazy like a week next week the week after and then we'll do finish this chapter probably the middle of May, and then we'll do probability, which is going to be really useful for life math. And I think that's it. I think that's it. I need to get better at looking at the camera because I don't like looking at the camera. It's not nice to get. That's probably better for you. I hope you guys are having a good Thursday. Um, take a break from math maybe for a little while. Unless you want to do a practice right now and just be on top of it. You can always send me questions on Remind or ask in the chat. Um, I will usually, unless they're immediately relevant, I will usually wait to the end to talk about them. And, and that's it. I'm not getting any questions in chat, so... We're gonna, I'm going to be off for about 12 minutes, and we'll start Algebra 2 up at 2 o'clock. Have a good day.